almost got thrown out because this year it's another new rule. Are we talking about new rules? I love new rules. Hi everyone, it's Lynn. I was asked to look at this rain delay play between California and Louisiana women's softball college. I'll do it. Oh, someone else asked me to move to the side of the screen so I can do that too. Hi! So let's get to it. We are in Louisiana. Say the Bolton Roulette, let the good times roll. And we begin with a national anthem problem. Visiting players do an anthem protest, kneeling has been around for a while now, and the home fans don't like it. The umpires are already on the field, they have jurisdiction. Is there anything to do? Answer, no. Let the players do what they're gonna do with the kneel, that's totally fine. And let the fans do what they're gonna do. If it needs to be addressed with game management, address it after the anthem, but you cannot retaliate against someone for protesting during an anthem by simply kneeling. Our national anthem from Yvette Gerard Field at Lampson Park, and we are just about set for softball. Now there's interaction between someone from that team and the fans, and if that rises to a level that needs to be addressed, you can step in. The team took care of it, no problem, let's play ball. To work around now, she is the person. The game begins in pretty good weather. It's not gonna last, those clouds are ominous, and in the seventh inning, we have another problem. Two pitch, this was lined in the left field. It's actually a chain of critical events, similar to our other Seconds from Disaster video we did, so let's break that down too. And oh. that hit her. The weather's doing just fine, but the pitcher isn't. Notice that going to the umpire saying either the batter was attempting to bump the ball when it struck her, or it hit the bat. Where and well, I think it hit the bat, Dan. The umpires do a great job here of getting together. And they're gonna go take a look at it on the replay. We have another potential item for our chain. First, we have that anthem situation, potentially charged emotionally with the fans. That could be a carryover. And now we have a delay to the game that gives the ominous weather more time to move in. We will wait. And... We have a review result, but rather than give the signal of what happened, the umpire gestures, hey you, yeah you, come here. Which is kind of, I take pause at because it doesn't come across as respectful. Like, I would not expect a coach to talk to an umpire that way. As an instant umpire, you probably don't want that. So it shouldn't be going the other way around either. There's no disciplinary issue to talk about. You are not taking control of a situation. This is just to explain what happened during a replay. So I'm gonna add this to the list because it tells me that there's an undercurrent of a lack of respect. Not necessarily what's in your heart, but what is perceived by watching this from afar. Fire is going to call the coaches together. And what I see here is the visiting coach come in, walk away. Why was the visiting coach there? I get it, you want both coaches together so you can explain it to them simultaneously. Totally understand that. But the body language shows me the lack of respect from the umpire perceptually of, hey, you, yeah, you, come here versus the coach coming in and immediately going out. I mean, she had no reason to stay. She didn't need an explanation on a call that favored her. You look at the video, the umpire never even acknowledges her, so that kind of contributes too. They're matching. The body language styles are matching, where the umpire's respect level for the coach perceptually appears low and vice versa as well. And what that tells me, because they're both being short with each other in these not really controversial situations is that if we are going to get to a controversial situation, they're not gonna work well together, which could lead to an exacerbation of the unsporting issue. You might say, Lindsay, you're absolutely crazy. You're seeing things here that aren't here. You're looking for way too much. And I'll just say that I've been doing this for a long time. I can see body language subtle cues that lead to bigger incidents. And I am seeing body language subtle cues that given the right circumstances that we're about to see, will lead to a bigger incident. This one skied to the right side. And oh no, here comes the rain. Wow, and it's coming down now too. This is the part you wanted me to answer the most, so here we go. Let's go to the rule book about rain. Rule four gives all the umpires the authority to allow players to warm up during inclement weather. And the plate umpire has final call for the fitness of the field. But what I really want to focus on is 611212, and specifically, quote, if a player's footing or grip on the bat or ball is obviously compromised. This is about suspending play. So there is a basis to suspend if the player cannot get a grip on the ball 
and it meets the standard of, quote, obviously compromised. Now, obvious is different to everyone, right? So just observe the following. It is peppering down right now. I think they're going to bring a, a little towel or some. And I think our plate umpire, Brian Sule, is going to send him to the dugouts. You know, no, they're going to say play. play on. I love to see a crew get together, but that was a super short meeting. So we have the pitcher, number five, can't get a grip of the ball. And number six, the crew gets together and decides to play anyway. Crew chief, I assume, is the first base umpire doing this. And this is what you do not want in the bottom of a seventh inning. And let's try to get this in. Wow. Critical item seven, last game of the tournament, last day, getaway day, last regulation inning as well. One run game. The Bears would have the one to nothing advantage, but they're at least going to let this go for another pitch. It all goes back to that grip rule about obviously compromised. If you want to see what an obviously compromised grip for a pitcher looks like, just look at the next two pitches. That one's away and gets away. When time's out, the pitcher turns to the umpire and says, I can't grip Let's the ball. Stand up to third well, place. have we hit compromised territory yet? The pitcher doesn't appear to be able to get a grip. I would say yes. The rules support suspending play at this time, but if you do that, the offensive team's going to be very upset. You ruined our momentum. We have everything going for us. But I think it would be foolish if they didn't admit, at least to themselves, part of the reason was the pitcher's wild because she can't grip the softball, which, again, the rule supports as a reason to suspend play. If you did suspend play, my opinion, this would be an example of doing the right thing, which is not easy because good luck selling that in this situation, last regulation inning, last day, last everything. And then the Cal coach is of course, saying, are you crazy? Look at the rain. How do you expect her to hold on to the ball? Remember the respect issue we talked about earlier? The coach says, my player can't grip it. Let's temporarily suspend play. The umpire says, I don't even want to hear it and walks away. Very similar tenor to the, hey, you, come here from earlier, which means that the team is not going to be happy again. And that means that when this next thing happens, we all but guarantee ourselves an ejection. Who does this shake up more? That one's away and gets away. The runner comes and it's going to be a tie game. Rowling is saying, I can't grip the ball. Is and an assistant coach, and she away. just got thrown out because this year it's another all new right, rule. Assistant that, coaches coach. cannot come out and complain about umpiring. Finally, back-to-back -back wild pitches came tied up. Flashpoint boils over. Pitcher's like, what are you doing, ump? Catcher's like, what are you doing, ump? And so the coach comes out, ejection. Catcher and the batter get into it, and only the catcher is ejected because the crew doesn't even address the other team because they're kind of tunnel visioned into the visiting team that is kind of going crazy right now. Plate umpire's like, I'm surrounded. It's that little bunny step that gets me. It's one step away from fisticuffs in hockey. Not in baseball and softball, obviously, but I'm in a different sport where fighting is permitted, and you do see things like that happen. Like, freezing the video here looks really bad. Yelling at people walking away looks even worse. This is working to the benefit of the team that is losing its mind right now, because it's delaying the game. And that's exactly what they wanted to happen. The rain is coming down so strong, it's the type of cell that's going to be super strong, but super short. It's going to hit and pass through. All you have to do is wait. So all they want is a few minutes to buy some time, which they're doing right now. And that's why if you're an official who's kind of prideful a little bit about saying, I said play, we're going to play. It doesn't really work that way because what's going to end up happening is the team is going to start getting argumentative and cause an unsporting issue like this one that's going to be a bigger headache for you to do paperwork-wise on the, on the one hand, but also will kind of completely undermine your idea of, I want to play right now because what happens here? The game's delayed. And what's going to happen at the end of this? The rain's going to go super light and the team's going to be able to get out of the inning because they can grip the ball again. Look how much time you're saving just for an argument. Like the fact the water has accumulated enough to be just dripping off of the hat kind of, well, doesn't matter now. The rain's gone. Just one of those quick five minute showers that... And it's also a quick five minute unsporting incident. And now the Louisiana coach is upset that they've wasted so much time. Isn't this great? This one's popped up. Foul ground. And running on the First and third for Cal in the eighth inning, but wait, we have another review for leaving early. And we're and kind of fabbing. 
And they will say that no, she did not leave early. Squares to butt, gets it down. It's a good one. The run's going to score. After all that, Cal takes the lead, wins on a beautiful catch. Everyone thankfully gets to go home. This has been a chain of critical events leading to an unsporting incident that maybe didn't have to happen if things had been done differently. You just from the years of doing this, you just see things like animosity between coach and umpire that aren't even conscious, like below the surface, like body language that is short, the posturing that goes like the other way, ignoring people, things like that all add up. So when something controversial happens, this unsporting event is more likely to occur. I know there's gonna to be tons of disagreement with that analysis, but guess what? I've seen it so many times at the major league level and really any of the sports, it's all the same. It's all about relationships with people. And if you're not treating people nicely, they're not gonna treat you nicely as well. Visit us online at closecallsports.com, Twitter and Facebook at Close Call Sports. Discord, like, subscribe, we'll see you on the site.